Three people were injured after an attack on an oil depot in Feodosia of Russia. Presumably, two missiles landed there. According to Baza, five fuel tanks were damaged after the landing, two were completely destroyed, three more were damaged and are burning. Due to the attack, train traffic on the Vladislavovka, Feodosia section was restricted. Passengers of one train had to be transferred to buses. As a result of the attack, three people were injured, some were hospitalized. Earlier, the authorities reported that due to the incident at the oil depot, traffic was blocked on Geologikaskaya Street and Fedko Street. Emergency services are working at the scene. Meanwhile, a man-made emergency situation has been declared in Feodosia, local authorities, the oil depot continues to burn. It is not just an oil depot that is burning in Feodosia, but an oil loading port, on which the entire peninsula depends for fuel supply. This is a serious blow to the logistics of the occupation forces if they are unable to put out the fire and cope with the consequences, the oil base that is burning in Feodosia, JSC Marine Oil Terminal, is the largest in Crimea in terms of transshipment of oil products. This oil depot was already attacked by drones in March of this year. Later, the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation announced that 21 Ukrainian drones were allegedly shot down over Russia and the temporarily occupied Crimea at night. It is noted that 12 UAVs were allegedly shot down over Crimea, 6 over Kursk Oblast and 1 each over the territories of Belhorod, Bryansk and Voronezh Oblasts of the Russian Federation. At the same time, the morning summary of the department does not mention the burning oil plant in Feodosia. The Russian propaganda publication TASS reported that a man-made state of municipal emergency was introduced in Feodosia after a fire at an oil depot. Later, they clarified that the state of emergency was not implemented due to the fire at the oil depot in Feodosia, the city administration reported. A technical error occurred, the commission meeting has not yet been held, the authorities clarified, the message reads. By the way, it has been attacked for the fourth time in two years. Only thanks to the North Korea, the Kremlin can still wage its war in Ukraine. At that, many shells were produced a long time ago, but they are still in the service of the North Korea. American military experts write that only thanks to Pyongyang, the Russian Federation can still fight against the Ukrainian armed forces. At that, the North Korea has a lot of shells, even though most of them are unreliable. The resource, foreign policy, informs. As of the summer of 2024, the North Korea supplied the Russian Federation with about 2 million shells. Most of them were defective. The expert on weapons of the North Korea, Van Diepen, said that even despite the large amount of defects among artillery shells, the Russian Federation can still fight against the army of Ukraine. The main tactic of the Russian Federation is to release as many artillery shells as possible before the offensive. Michael Kaufman of the Carnegie Endowment agrees that the North Korea's artillery shells are unreliable, but their quantity also affects the war in Ukraine. Experts say that North Korea shells allow the Russian Federation to have a 3-to-1 advantage on the battlefield. It is Russia's large number of shells, although they are of poor quality, that alarms both Kyiv and the West. About half of the approximately 3 million artillery shells that Russia uses each year in its war against Ukraine come from North Korea, according to the Times. A source of the agency who cited Western intelligence data, Russia has become dependent on supplies from North Korea after Vladimir Putin visited Pyongyang earlier this year. Western intelligence assesses that many of the North Korean shells may be faulty, but their sheer number allowed Russia to achieve consistent successes on the battlefield. The Times source noted that despite this, Russia is suffering significant losses in Ukraine, about 1,200 military personnel per day, 480 of them in the battle for the city of Pokrovsk in the Donetsk region. According to Western intelligence, Russia is currently unable to simultaneously capture Pokrovsk and 
push Ukrainian forces out of the Kursk region without mass mobilization. However, the Russian authorities are not taking that step at this time. The source of the agency added that there are currently no signs that Putin is backing away from his main goal of subjugating Ukraine's sovereignty. He also added that he sees no prospects for negotiations in the future.